So this will be a response to uh, Ray of Sunder. Uh, we've been exchanging a couple uh, private messages, and I don't really know her very well, so I don't think she'll mind if I uh, share some of the things we've been discussing. Um, or I should say, I don't know her ego very well. She doesn't. Well, maybe she does know my ego very well. It depends on what you think uh, I am. Um, uploading here onto YouTube. What am I portraying? My own personal egoic inadequacies, or am I trying to tap into that self which we all share? Um, and that's one of the things that, that Ray and I were talking about. Another thing was language and how, you know, Ray is, is learning to speak Spanish. Portuguese and French, and she lives in uh, Quebec, um, and I'm, I'm somewhat jealous of that. I can only speak English, a little bit of Spanish, um, but it, it seems to me that the more languages you can speak, the better you understand each individual language, um, and you know, understanding a language, I guess, is just... It, it means sharing a world with other people. You know, we English speakers can share meaningful expressions with one another only because we exist within a somewhat similar context. If I could speak Portuguese, I would bring forth a completely different context with, with other Portuguese speakers. Um, you know, I don't know from first-hand experience that translating from one language to another is is impossible or just you know hopeless in a sense if, if your goal is to literally um, you know transfer the meaning of, of a sentence in one language into another you really can't do that because you know there are puns uh, there are certain you know certain sayings certain allusions um, certain turns of phrase that you couldn't understand unless you, you speak that language, and so to try to translate it, you're, you're not carrying over the original meaning, and I think it's unfortunate for people like me who can only speak one language because, you know, I guess English is, uh, you know, if you were going to speak one language, that's probably your best bet, English, but it certainly leaves out a lot. You know, I'd love to be able to speak French and German uh, and, you know, Spanish Italian, if I could understand the meanings that are brought forth by those different cultural traditions, I think I would, I would be more of an earthling. As it stands now, I'm an Englishman or an American. Um, but uh, Ray and I were also talking about the ego and the self, and um, I described how our ego our, our conscious experience isn't just this fixed, completely present um, thing that's, that's only in the here and now. The ego is actually this temporally spread uh, process of, of becoming. Um, you know, the ego is made up of past experiences, memories, and, you know, future anticipations, future anxieties, things that, uh, you know, the ego is preparing for based on what it has already experienced. Uh, and then there's the self, and the self doesn't seem to be um, trapped in space-time like the ego. The ego has to, you know, conform to, to a certain socio-historical context. Uh, it has to be a certain person in a certain place at a certain time. The self is all places, all people, all faces, all times. Uh, you know, it's the self is the one expressing itself as the many egos, each of us. We all speak our own languages. You know, even those of us who are English speakers, I think uh, we all have our own um, dialects, right, and we can somewhat understand each other, you know, 
when, when we try to reach across different dialect dialectical um, uh, habitats. We can reach each other, but it's difficult to fully communicate, even as English speakers. There's so much diversity within the English ecosystem, right? All of these words that we throw at one another are competing for uh, survival or for meaning. Um, so when we speak to one another, you know, we're doing something that's fundamentally natural, you know, and, and, and it's fundamentally uh, part of living, you know. It's unfortunate these days that so many people say that talk is cheap. You know, you've got to put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. When, you know, I would almost want to reverse that and say the problem today is that we don't understand what we're doing because we, we act without thinking. And, you know, by thinking, I mean more than just, you know, getting lost in abstractions. I mean reflecting upon the consequences of our behavior, learning from our mistakes. Um, You know, perhaps the learning curve or the evolutionary spiral is uh, about to mutate. Because that's how evolution works, the, through mutations. It's not this gradual change. There are catastrophes, crises. And each of, each of these crises brings, you know, great destruction, but also, uh, you know, entirely unexpected creation. Something old is destroyed, and something new is brought forth. And, uh, you know, perhaps we're in a moment like that. Perhaps part of it is, is learning to speak a new language. Uh, you know, I won't pretend to, to offer the name of what this language might be, but uh, I, would, I would wager that it would be planetary in the sense that we could all understand it. It wouldn't marginalize anyone. So it means that every Earthling can participate in the uh, discussion that we have as a species about the state of our existence on planet Earth. Uh, and, you know, that's our struggle today, perhaps, is to invent a language of Earth, um, you know, a shared set of words and letters, a shared meaning as uh, a community of life on Earth. We'll see. It could happen.